In this episode of our Coffee with a PhD student series, I'll be interviewing Jonathan Davies to chat about how we look at the smallest particles in our universe and how we learn to understand them. For our next of the British Science Week Coffee with a PhD student podcast, I'm talking to Jonathan Davies, who's a PhD student on the LHCB experiment. We'll be talking about your research and about your kind of path into PhD. So, and Jonathan, then if you want to start to kind of just introduce yourself and, and what kind of things you work on. Hi, yes. So, uh, uh, lo- lovely to be here. So, I'm, I'm currently in my second year uh, here at Manchester uh, doing my PhD. So, broadly speaking, um, the kind of category of, of physics uh, that I'm involved with is what's known as uh, particle physics. So um, this is a name which, which maybe doesn't, doesn't necessarily immediately give away uh, what it's all about, but um, essentially, hopefully uh, many, many of us are aware that um, maybe you remember from, from, from school um, that, that everything uh, around us is, is made up of these really, really small things uh, called atoms. And, and possibly at the time you might have been taught that um, you know, that, that's really kind of as, as, as small as you can go. Well, it turns out that you can, you can zoom, zoom in on these, on these things even further. So there are, there are even smaller uh, particles sort of within the atom. You know, if you really sort of zoom in, there's, there's a whole sort of myriad. Like we, of, we often talk about this, this zoo of, of, of different particles. Uh, that, you can, that you can find um, or sort of at a, at a fundamental level. Um, there, there, you know, there are, there, are, there are so many different, very, very, very small particles which, which ultimately sort of uh, explain why things happen, uh, how, how they happen. Um, so that's, that's broadly speaking uh, what particle physics is all about. Um, I, I work on uh, an experiment at... Um, Quite a quite a well known um, facility called the Large Hadron Collider. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's uh, it consists primarily of a 27 kilometer long ring, which is buried deep underground underneath the the city of of Geneva in Switzerland. And what we do here is we we take uh, protons. So essentially, the, these are the things that you you find. Uh, the centre of atoms. We take these things and we accelerate them incredibly quickly to within you know, a hair's breadth of, of the speed of light. And then once we've done that, we essentially smash them together. And in effect, this breaks the protons apart. What our job as particle physics physicists really consist of is, is uh, observing this mess of, of different, uh, essentially, bits of the proton which, which come flying out that, that really gives us... Um, uh, an insight into into the the really fundamental um, nature of of, of you know, physics. I mean, and, and you've said about observing these and, and saying about just how small they are. So obviously, um, you know, talking of the size of an atom, we're, we're smaller than the size of microscopes here. How how do we go about observing these particles? Oh well, so. And this, this is possibly part of this is, is straying into um, things that, of which I have a, a very sort of vague understanding. A, a very key part of um, the, whole, the whole effort that we have at, um, at the Large Hadron Collider um, consists of having incredibly precise detectors, things that can measure time scales a fraction of a fraction of a, of a second, that can measure incredibly um, uh, small uh, distances. Um, a lot of this relies on um, uh, things like semiconductor uh, technology, so like solid, solid state sort of physics is the kind of thing which um, we is, is kind of increasingly um, becoming the uh, sort of inside all, all the technologies that we're used to in terms of you know, mobile phones and computers. We can a very a very obvious telltale sign that we that you can have if if you've um, observed a, a particular um, subatomic particle is if it's charged. Um, charged particles do um, do something called uh, ionization, and and this is this is a very um, relatively easy way that we can spot them. So the very earliest particle physics um, detectors consisted of things like um, cloud chambers. So essentially you'd fill a box with essentially smoke. You'd build like a little sort of cloud in a box. 
Uh, and if one of these sort of subatomic um, particles passed through your box, what you'd see is a little a little track. Essentially, you'd, you'd sort of visibly sort of see this um, this sort of track form throughout your um, uh, in your box. Um, and, and, and broadly speaking, although the technology has, has, has evolved to using, as I say, sort of semiconductor technology, a bit more sort of advanced techniques, uh, roughly speaking, a lot of the stuff that we do now is, um, is very similar to this, so looking for, for, for tracks left by charged particles um, in our detectors. So, and, and earlier when you mentioned you're in the second year of, of the PhD yeah. now, so, so, I mean, really, how, how's that going? And also, what were your kind of journey into a PhD? Yeah, so... Um, the, the, the immediate thing that, that I was doing uh, before, before my PhD was, of course, I had to go and, uh, and, and first get a, an undergraduate physics degree. Um, so I spent um, four years at Imperial College in London, which is where I did my, my undergrad. I did an um, integrated master's degree, so a four-year-long degree, uh, and at the end, uh, get a master's degree. Uh, well, obviously, before you can sort of track it back before that, and obviously, GCSE and A level, of course, I did sort of science-related uh, subjects, of course, and maths, again, very, very, uh, very, very important. Um, maths is really sort of the language of physics, so um, it's it's very important to have a good grasp of that. Um, more, more, more broadly, you know, I've I've, I've you know, been interested in particle physics, so I've kind of been reading popular science books for, for, for quite some time. So that, that was other, another sort of key, uh, key part of, sort of my journey into particle physics, I would say. Did you always know that you wanted to do particle physics or, or even physics or science more generally? Was, was kind of sci a, a, a kind of scientist a career path that you'd seen for a long while yeah. or was it something more recent? I think the, the story that I often tell is um, um, when, when I was a young kid, uh, I think Scientist always sounded like a cool thing, you know. I'd watch lots of uh, TV shows and, and films with sort of mad scientists in, just sort of messing about with chemicals on, on a day to day basis. And I thought thought that sounded pretty cool. Um, so it's 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 been on on sort of in the back of my mind for for, for quite some time. Um, I would say probably, I mean, as, as dramatic as it sounds, um, a light bulb moment for me was um, back in two thousand and twelve when particle physics and the Large Hadron Collider was very much in the news um, because um, we had we'd discovered this new particle called uh, the Higgs boson, um, which was essentially like um, the, the one remaining last piece of the puzzle of, of this, this model that we had for how part particle physics works. So it was, it, was, it was a very, very big, big discovery. I remember it being all over the news and I don't know, for, for some reason, when, when all of that was kicking off, I thought, you know what, this, this, actually, sounds, this actually sounds quite cool. Um, I mean, I think like part, particle physics, really, if, if, you're, if, if you're someone like me that, that really wants to kind of like delve deeper, you know, zoom in closer and sort of saying, yeah, but why does that happen? And then why does that happen? Um, I feel for me, particle physics, was 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 the aspect of science that really sort of best explained that excellent so i mean you said about the, the higgs boson in 2012 and i think for, for a lot of us that's um you know that's quite a, a strong memory but also in terms of kind of completing that puzzle so you've said about kind of currently smashing particles mm. together i know so the, the large hadron collider is soon to to start up again what are we still looking for what's next and also just as importantly how might we find it Right. Yeah. So um, this this I often, I think it's, it's it's kind of a funny one, in that um, we we measure this we we discover this Higgs boson, which as I said was was kind of this missing piece, um, and it, it fitted our predictions for how we expected it to be um, very well, which on the one hand is 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 excellent, but on the other hand it's kind of disappointing, and and the the reason why I say that is. Um, we know from, from, from other means that um, our, current, our current picture of, of particle physics is, is, is not complete. There are things that we currently don't have a good model for. So one of the, obvious, one of the most famous examples of this is um, something called dark matter. Uh, the reason why it's called dark matter is because um, well, it doesn't seem to interact with, with light in the same way that the, the, kind of the matter that, we, that we're used to does. Um, 
And yet, if if you sort of point the telescope out, out into the sky, and, and there are some uh, clever techniques that you can do to sort of get a, get a handle of how much mass there is out there, there is there is an Im, there is very much a, a sort of imbalance between the amount of matter that we can see and the amount of matter which which seems to be there from from the way it interacts with gravity. So we know that there is essentially another type of matter that that. Currently, we cannot explain with, um, yeah. I talked. I talked about the, the the zoo of particles. We have we have a whole sort of range of different particles within our our current model of of particle physics. Unfortunately, none of these, in the way we understand them at the moment, can can uh, explain this 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 dark matter. They can't. They can't be part. They can't be candidates for this dark matter. So that's that's one of a a few reasons why we know. Unfortunately, our picture, our picture can't be, uh, can't be uh, complete, and so um, essentially, in, in this era of you know, since the discovery of the Higgs boson, we're we're looking for ways in which um, we essentially we're 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 trying to break our current our current model of, of particle physics. So we're making we try to make very preci- very very precise measurements, and if we see. If, if we're able to sort of pick up a, uh, a substantial enough um, discrepancy between what we predict and what we observe, then, then really that's, that's um, kind of a smoking gun for, you know, an area where, where, where this new, new physics might come in. And um, th- there are a, ho- a whole range of explanations. Uh, so it, it, could be, um, it, it could be that, that there are yet more particles to be discovered that we, we, we haven't yet uh, been able to pick up in our detectors, but uh, but yeah. So I mean, with, with so many open questions, and I mean, people may have, may, or you know, students may well have seen, um, you know, over the last couple of uh, the year years or so, there's also been you know new new discoveries. I remember a lot of people on the LHCB experiment being cautiously excited last year, mm. um, and it was the phrase that was thrown around, and and maybe inspired to to look further into this. So really, for kind of uh, maybe secondary school students thinking about A levels or A level students thinking about university. What kind of advice would you give for, for students who are thinking of going down this kind of route and looking into both physics and, and particle physics in particular? Yeah, so I mean, at the, at the very at the very boring level, obviously, you've got to do the the the, the right sort of subjects. As I say, you know, pick pick a sort of appropriate GCSEs, A levels, and whatnot, and you know, to, to try try to do as, as well as you can. I mean, it's 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 not true that to be a physicist, you you have to be you know getting you know, 100% every single exam, you know, that's, that's, that, 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 that's not the case. But, um, I mean, hopefully if you have a, if you have a genuine interest in the subject, a genuine passion for it, then, then that, that will carry you through the whole sort of, um, that side of things. Um, I guess also equally, you know, if you're, if, if you're interested in, in the subject, you know, there's, there's plenty uh, particularly with particle physics, there's, there's plenty of resources out there. You know, TV series and books. There's lots of po- you know popular science stuff out there that if you know if you really want to sort of get your teeth into it, then then uh, you know there's there's plenty to go at. So um, you know by all means check 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 these out. Um, yeah, I mean I guess that would prove the best. So I think we're we're almost out of time, but just as a, as a final kind of fun question, um, just to kind of throw out there, do you have a favourite particle? <laughs> and if so, why why so? See, my 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 natural instinct is is to be is to be very boring, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 go f- and go for the obvious one, which is which is the Higgs boson. Um, but you know, I, I probably will. I probably will go for that just because, obviously, it's it, you know it's, it's the most recent one uh, that we're able to discover. It, it links together um, lots lots of different sectors of, of our current model of, of particle physics, um, and it's uh, for you, those that you don't know, um, the Higgs boson is essentially uh, fundamentally behind answering the question of, of how particles acquire mass. Um, and um, you know, I'm not going to go into the details here, but um, 
if you if you, if you do look into this, I think the, the the kind of the mechanism, the way the way by which this happens, is is quite is quite neat, sort of mathematically. Um, but I'm afraid that is kind of like a technical. Uh, there is a sort of a technical point there, but. Um, but yeah, so I'll probably go for that, as boring as it is. No, it's a, it's a good choice. It's a really good choice. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's all that we have time for now. So thank you for, for speaking with us. It's um, been a really, really interesting discussion. So yeah, thank, thank you. you.